Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Clifford of Shimatsu Scientific Instruments. The topic we will discuss today is which cleaning validation technique is the best. There are many analytical instruments used in the preparation, production, and discharge process during the manufacturing of pharmaceuticals. Today, we are going to explore which analytical technique is best and why. What are the analytical instruments used in the pharmaceutical industry? For example, during preparation, what is the quality of the water used to produce the drugs? One technique for measuring the water quality is TOC analysis. After the drugs are produced, they can be detected by GC, LC, GCMS, LCMS, spectroscopy, or some other analytical technique to ensure the quality. Before the next batch of drugs is made in the vats, they must be cleaned and the waste is discharged. In fact, from start to finish, the cleaning process is very important. This presentation will focus on the cleaning process after production of the drugs. In the chart are some analytical methods to consider for cleaning validation. The consideration areas starting from left to right are method, specificity, drug residues, excipients, cleaning agents, and biopharmaceuticals. Currently, biopharmaceuticals account for less than 10% of the prescription drugs today. That rate is expected to rise to 80% by 2020. So let's look at the first method, TOC. It is a nonspecific method. It can measure the drug residues, the excipients, the cleaning agents, and the biopharmaceuticals. If we look at the second line, pH, it is also a nonspecific method, but it can measure only the cleaning agents. The third line for conductivity is also a nonspecific method, and that can only measure the cleaning agents. For spectroscopy, for specificity, we have yes slash no. It's because many compounds can absorb at 254 nanometers. So if we have overlapping wavelengths for the different compounds, it's going to be nonspecific. Uh, for the drug residues, we have yes and no. The excipients, we have yes and no. And the biopharmaceuticals, yes and no. It cannot measure the cleaning agents. LCMS and LC are specific methods they can measure the drug residues, excipients, and biopharmaceuticals, but cannot measure the cleaning agents. Similarly, for TLC, they can measure the, the drug residues, the excipients, and biopharmaceuticals, but not the cleaning agents, as we see here. TOC can measure all components, including the organics in the preparation water. Because TOC is most inclusive method, this will be considered the method evaluated for cleaning validation. Also, we will see TOC can be further broken down into three cleaning validation methods. The three methods for TOC cleaning validation include the rinse sampling method, where the rinse water is collected at the bottom of the vat and analyzed for TOC. Second, the swab sampling method with aqueous extraction where a particular area of the vat is swabbed. The swab is then inserted into a 40 ml vial of water where the organic material is extracted into the water which is later analyzed by TOC. And third, the swab sampling method with direct combustion again swabs a particular area of vat but the entire swab is heated at a combustion temperature of 900 degrees C for analysis. There were six compounds used in this study, two soluble in water, two slightly soluble in water, and two very insoluble in water. For the slightly soluble and very insoluble compounds in water, ethanol and acetone were used to bring the compounds into solution. Of the compounds soluble in water, one was caffeine. Of the insoluble in water, one was a calcium channel blocker blood pressure medicine and also two very insoluble compounds or ointments. The instrument used for the first two TOC methods was the Shimatsu TOC LCPH. The first two TOC methods are the rinse water method and the swab method with water extraction. There was a high sensitivity catalyst used for each. The measurement method was TOC acidify and sparge method, also called NPOC or non-purgeable organic carbon. The calibration curve was a two-point calibration curve with a zero and a three part per million potassium hydrogen phthalate or KHP with an injection volume of 500 microliters. For sample preparation, 200 micrograms of material was dissolved in 100 mils of water, ethanol, or acetone. 
the final concentration of the sample was 2 mg per liter or part per million. The sample is dried on a stainless steel pot and analyzed by one of the three TOC cleaning validation methods to determine the recovery. So let's look at the analysis of percent recovery rate for the rinse method. Column 1 is the substance name, which includes a blank measurement. Second column is the TOC concentration that was actually measured from the 2 ppm. And the third is the recovery rate, which is the TOC concentration minus the blank divided by the theoretical concentration. So we see the blank was 0 0.030 part per million. For compounds 1 and 2, the recovery rates were 2.14 and 2.19 for a recovery rate of 105%, 108%. The third and fourth compounds were recovery rates of 109 and 107%. These were the slightly soluble compounds. For the insoluble compounds, the ointments number 5 and 6, recoveries were only 4.35% and 15.2%, very low recoveries. The second area of recovery is the swab with the aqueous extraction. A specific area of the kettle is swabbed. The swab is then inserted in a 40 mil vial. You snap off the swab, you add water, you put on the cap, you let it soak for one hour, for the extraction and then you analyze by TOC. The second recovery method was the swab aqueous extraction. Again, the first column is the substance name including a blank. The second column was the TOC concentration measure which started with the 2 ppm and the third was the recovery rate. For the swab, it was a 5 centimeter square piece of Texwife Alpha 10. The swabs were washed in pure water and allowed to dry before any swabbing was done. For the first two compounds, which were the soluble compounds, recoveries were 107 and 109%, very similar to what we had previously on the rinse water method. The third and fourth compounds, the slightly insoluble compounds, recoveries were much lower than before at 92% and about 90%. For compounds 5 and 6, the ointments, the very insoluble compounds, again, recovery was very poor at 1.70 and 7.45% percent recoveries. The instrument used for the third TOC technique, the swab with direct combustion method, was again the TOC LCPH from Shimatsu as well as the SSM 5000A solid sample module using a short cell that requires a carrier gas of 400 mils per minute oxygen. The measurement mode was TC or total carbon. The calibration curve was a one point calibration curve created from a glucose solution. The swab material was Advanced Tech Quartz Glass Paper QR100 that had a diameter of 45 millimeters. Before any sampling began, the swabs were heat treated to 600 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. The swab direct combustion procedure is a very simple method. Simply swab a specific area as in step one. Step two, you transfer the swab to a sample boat. And step three is insert the boat into the TOC analyzer as shown here. Shown here are the recovery rates for the swab with direct combustion analysis. The left hand column is the substance name which included the blanks. The TOC value that was measured in micrograms of carbon which should be about 200 micrograms of carbon for the different compounds. And column three is the recovery rate. If you look at column three the recovery rates are all about a hundred percent whether the compounds were soluble in water, slightly insoluble, or very insoluble in water. This appears to be the best recovery rates that we've seen in this presentation. Shown here are the summary of the recovery rates. Substance name is in the first column, the solubility of the water is in the second column, and the third, fourth, and fifth column are the recovery rates. In the third column are the rinse sampling method, the fourth column is the swab sampling with water extraction, and the fifth column is the swab sampling with direct combustion method. And you can see from the fifth column all the recoveries are around 100%. So from this study, one can see that the swab direct combustion method is the best cleaning validation of all analytical techniques as well as the best TOC method. Knowing recoveries are in the 100% range is especially important when a single vat is used to make multiple drugs to prevent any carryover. Also, the swab combustion method is the best method 
if compounds of interest are broken down to form multiple other compounds since it is a nonspecific method. So in conclusion, TOC can be used for testing of the production water. It can be used for testing of the wastewater. TOC is the most universal technique for cleaning validation. It can test for the drug residues, the excipients, the cleaning agents, and the biopharmaceuticals. So the title of the slide was cleaning validation, which technique is best? The technique that is best is clearly the swab TOC with direct combustion analysis to ensure 100% recovery for all compounds. If you have any questions, please submit them to me. Here's my email address as well as my phone number. If you want more details on this presentation, they appeared in Peer Review Journal Pharmaceutical Technology, Volume 36, Number 8, in August 2012. The title was Carbon Measurement Method for Cleaning Validation. Thank you. Have a good day. Excellence in Science, Shimazu.